straight back to the wall. I'm trying to walk the biggest prison wall. get you anywhere, you thick-headed twit brain. All I can say is thank heavens. Michael has inherited his old man brains, eh, son? Eh, son? My cold. And I shall take the money when you earn it. And I shall spend it. But I shan't enjoy it because of the despicable way in which you've spoken to me tonight. This is not your fault. They're stupid books and they're stupid reading. But that's not right. You're off to school in a few days and I know your headmistress, Agatha Trunchbull. Scary woman she is. Used to compete in the Olympics, throwing the hammer. Imagine what she's going to do to a horrible little goblin like you, boy. I'm a girl. Now get off to bed, you little bookworm. Good hair means a good brain. What are you talking about, you fool? 
The boys are loony. Mum, would you like to hear a story? Don't be disgusting. The sooner you're locked up in school, the better. Again. Yes, I mean, my mom wanted me to stay at home with her, but I think it's good for grown-ups to have their own space. Oh, your parents must be so proud to have a girl as clever as you. Ooh, and you tell them stories like you tell me? Oh, I love your stories, Matilda. That's a hint, by the way. Once upon a time, the two greatest sex performers in the world, an escapologist and an acrobat, fell in love and got married. Queens, celebrities, and astronauts, and not just due to their skill, but their love for, another, for one another, which was so deep that it was said that cats would purr as they passed them, and dogs would weep with joy. Maybe it's a beautiful old house. But although they loved each other, they were sad. of their lives. So they decide to perform the most dangerous feat ever known to man. It is called The Burning Woman Hurled Through the Air in her hair and her starts to strike the object. Caught by the man locked in the cage. It is the most dangerous feat ever known to man. It is our destiny. Well, what will happen? I don't know. Bye, Mrs. Phelps. I'll see you tomorrow. After your first day of school, Matilda.
words. So, Matilda, you can read words? Well, I need to learn to read words that I can read sentences, because basically a sentence is a big bunch of words, and if you don't know how to read sentences, you've got no chance with books. Have you read an entire book by yourself? More than one. I love books. Last week I read quite a few. Really, what books did you read? Nicholas Nickleby, Oliver Twist, Jane Eyre, The Lord of the Rings, Crime and Punishment, and The Cat in the Hat. Well, don't just stand there like a wet tissue. Get on with it. Miss, Miss Trunchbull, there's a girl in my class. M Matilda Wormwood. Daughter of Mr. Harry Wormwood, who owns Wormwood Motors. Excellent man. Told me to watch out for the Pratt, though. Says he's a real wart. Oh, no, Headmistress. I don't think Matilda's that type of child at all. What is the school motto, Miss Honey? Baminatum est megitum. Baminatum est megitum. Children are oh maggots. In fact, it must have been her hip with that stink bomb. Under my desk this morning, I'll have her for that. Thank you for suggesting it. But I didn't. Miss Trunchbull, Matilda Wormwood is a genius. Nonsense. In my opinion, she shall be placed with the 11 year olds. We cannot just place you with the 11 year olds. What kind of society would that be? What about the rules, honey? Rules. I believe Matilda is an exception to the rules. An exception to the rules in my school. Look at these trophies, see how my trophies gleam in the sunlight, see how they shine. What do you think it took to become English hammer throwing champion? 1969, do you think in that moment, when my big moment came, that I treated the rules with casual disdain? No, 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 no! If you want to throw the hammer for your country You have to stay inside the circle all the time And if you want to make the team You don't need happiness or self-esteem You have to learn to keep your feet inside the line Sing, children! Two, three, four, he wants to throw the Nasty question asking businessmen. Oh no, don't tell me we're not rich. They took one look at the miles on the first car and told me these cars are knackered. 
I told them the miles were so high because of a manufacturing mistake. So you lied. Of course I lied. And they didn't believe you. Of course they didn't believe me. I've got green hair. I've got hair. And what's this? Another flaming book. What's wrong with the telly? No, no, it's a lovely book. Honest, you should read it. I'm sure you... Here's what I think you're lovely. <laughs> It's a library book! You shut the little brat! I'm late for my dance lesson with Rodolfo! Is there any super glue? The cupboard. And whilst you're at it, why don't you glue your stupid book to your stupid head? <laughs> <laughs> Just because you find that life's not fair It doesn't mean that you just have to grin and bear it If you always take it on the chin and wear it Nothing will change Even if you little you can do a lot You must not a little thing like little stop you If you sit around and let them get on top you Might as well be saying you think that it's okay And that's not right Got my arm, you boy I'm a girl Do all those brains in your head give you a headache? I mean, it's got to hurt. I'll squish them there. No, it's fine. I think they just fit. Well, I'd better stick around just in case they start to squeeze out your ears. I'm Lavender, and I think it's probably for the best if we're friends. Heidi, someone put a whole can of treat on the turtle's chair. Someone took her eye and now she's after me. But that's so fair.
hair. Completely different car service. Yeah, green hair? Yeah, it was a National Green Hair Day. Um, a, a holiday to celebrate all the wonderful green things in the world, like lettuce and a uh, snack. Tomorrow's one? Absolutely, sir. Bye bye, sir. Now that is how you do it. You know, I think I'm going to leave this on. It looks like rain. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Who is it? Um, yes. Hello. Miss Honey? Matilda's teacher? A bit busy right now. It will only take a moment. Oh, well, come in if you must then. <laughs> this is Rodolfo. He's my dance partner. We're rehearsing. Ciao. Ah, Petaniolo? Vigne. What? Who is this, babe? You know, eruptions through the my Energy flow. What do you want, Miss Chutney? It's Miss Honey. Well, as you know, Miss Totem's in the bottom class, and children in the bottom class are only expected to read. Well, stop reading then! Lord knows we've tried. I'm in my zone, dog. I feel it in me hips. Don't waste it. I'm not in favor of girls getting all clever pants, Miss Hussey. Looks are more important than bucks. And look at you. <laughs> look at me. You chose books. I chose looks. Good day. Stop being pathetic, Jenny. Just get on your feet. Jenny, you are going to march and then your mind. Leave it alone, Jenny. The more that you try, the more you just look like a fool. This is not your problem. You've not got the spine. You are a teacher, just go back to school. But this little girl, this miracle, she seems not to know. She's special at all. And what sort of teacher would I be if I let little girl fall? I can't see the little girl leave. Somebody stood to fight by her side. Instead, she's
has a happy ending? No. Just then, the acrobat sister stepped forward and produced a contract. I have paid for the post-it publicity, the catering and the toilet facilities. Where is my profit? A contract is a contract. You will perform on this very day or after prison. You both shall go. No, no, no. What happens next? I don't know. Yet, I'll tell you tomorrow. Matilda, starting tomorrow, I shall bring you a selection of very clever books that will challenge your mind. You may sit and read while I teach the others. If you have any questions, I will do my best to answer them. How does that sound? Oh, Matilda, that is the biggest hug in the entirety of the world. You're going to hug all the air out of me. Matilda, where I went, where is? Ah, so you admit it, do you? This morning, a foul carbuncle sneaked like a serpent into the kitchen and stole a slice of my private chocolate cake from my tea tray. No, I did not. I'm whispers. Matilda has been here with us all morning. Ah, standing up for the little spit fool, are you? Well, this crime took place before school started. Therefore, she is guilty. Okay, look, I stole the cake. And honestly, I was really, definitely, Sort of. Almost thinking of owning up. Maybe. But I was having a lot of trouble with my belly. The trench bull's cake was so good that I scoffed it down too quick. And now it's beginning to fight back. See? You are a crooked and a thief and I shall crush you! A huge cloud of chocolatey gas wafted from my mouth full into the face of the trench bowl. Bruce Bogtrotter. Yes, miss? You liked my cake, didn't you, Bruce? Yes, miss Trenchbull, and I'm very sorry, but... Oh, as long as you enjoyed the cake. That's the main thing. It is? Yes, Bogtrotter, it is. I did. Thank you. Wonderful. Marvelous. That makes me so happy. It gives me a warm glow in my lower intestine. Oh, cook! What's the matter, Bolt Trotter? Lost your appetite? Yes, miss, I'm full. I will tell you when you are full, and I say that criminals like you are not full until you've eaten the entire But cake. No buts eat. And mistress, help me sick. He should have thought of that before he decided to just steal my cake. Eat. Eat. Eat! A single slice, or even two.
right, Jenny. We all get carried away sometimes, even me. Well done, Bob Trot, a good show. Well, come along, Bob Trotter. What's where? <laughs> oh, did I not mention? That was the first part of your punishment. There's more. The second part, and the second part is choking. What? No, please. Hey, mistress, you can't. Do you think I would allow myself to be defeated by these maggots? Did you? Who do you think I am, Miss Honey? A weakling? No, please, not that! Don't take me to Chokey! No, please, not That's that! That's not that! Oh. Oh, Matilda, thank God you're here. I have been dying for the next part of the story. I haven't slept a wink. Mrs. Phelps, where's the revenge section? It's in the section... Wait, what? Is there a child at school who's behaving like a bully? Not a child, exactly. Would you like to hear the next part of the story? What are we waiting for? As they prepared themselves for the most dangerous feat ever known to man, the acrobat gave her husband a kiss. First, I escape from the cage, catch you with one hand, grab a fire extinguisher with the other, so I can blow with the flames on your specially designed dress before you can, before you blow into pieces. Sorry, go on. The trick started well. The moment the dress was out of light, the acrobat swung into the air. She held over the sharks and spiky objects. Suddenly, the padlocks pinged open and the huge chains fell away. The door flung open and the escapologist reached out to catch his wife and the child. Oh, I can't look. He grabs her hand and suddenly the flames are covered in foam before they can both be blown to pieces. Hooray! So it does have a happy ending. No. No? The escapologist used just a touch too much foam and the hands became sticky and she fell. Did she survive? She broke every bone in her body, except the little ones at the ends of her fingertips. But luckily, she lived long enough to have their child. And then she died. And then things got worse. Worse? Oh no, Miss it can't get any worse than that. I'm afraid they did because the escapologist was kind enough that he never blamed the evil stepsister for what had happened. He even asked to move in with him and help look after the little girl. She was nothing but cruel to the little girl, beating her as if she ever did a thing wrong, but always in secret, so the escapologist never suspected a thing. Let's call the police. Mrs. Phelps, it's, it's just a story. Ah, uh, uh, yes, um, of course. Um, well, uh, I'd better get going now.
much to climb the trees you get to climb when you're grown up and when they grow up i will be smart enough to answer all the questions that you need to know the answers to before you're grown up Gather round. I want my family to share in my triumph. Not you, boy. I'm a girl. I had 155 old bangers on my hands. How could I possibly make the mollies go back? I couldn't very well drive each one backwards, could I? Backwards! When suddenly, I had the most genius idea in the world. Using my incredible mind, I attached a drill to the speedometer of the first car, turned it on, and whacked it into reverse. Backwards! Exactly! Within a few minutes, the mileage had gone down to practically nothing. Backwards! Ten minutes later, the businessmen show up. Expensive suits, dark glasses. Businessmen are nocturnal. I saw it on a program last night. That was a program about badges. Same thing. And, did it work? <gasps> Fantastico! Now we can afford Rodolfo all day long. 
But they trusted you, and you cheated them. What have we done to deserve a child like you? You know what I'm going to do tomorrow? I'm going to go down to that school of yours and tell your teacher you're never to be lessened again. No! And if she does, I'll have her fired. And you'll never read another stinking book as long as you live, young man. I'm a girl. Now get off to your bed, you nasty little creep. <laughs> Backwards. The little girl suffered in silence, never saying a word about the evil aunt's bullying. But that only encouraged the women to do greater cruelties, until one day, she exploded! And she beat her and threw her into a deep, dank, dusty cellar, locked the door and went out. What are you doing with those books, woman? They're for Matilda. Not on my watch. There's an age for reading and an age for being a filthy little toad. These are toads, aren't you, Bog Trotter? Yes, miss. Only Bog Trotter now is a good toad. Sit. <laughs> miss, honey, you believe in kindness and fluffiness and books and stories. That is not teaching. To teach the child, we must first break the child. Quiet, you maggots! No one is speaking, Miss Trenchable. Miss Honey, when I say quiet, you maggots, you are entirely included in that statement. Where is my jug of water? I'll get it, Miss Trenchable. <sighs> Stupid girl. Look at you! Flabby, disgusting, revolting, revolting, I say. I think it's time I toughened you all up with a little. Fizz, Ed. <laughs> This screw of late has started reeking. Quiet, maggots, when I'm speaking! Reeking with the most disturbing scent. Only the finest nostrils smell it, but I know it oh too well. It is the odour of rebellion, it's bouquet of dissent. The smell of rebellion comes out in your sweat And fizzed will get you sweating And it won't be long before I smell the pomp Of aging and abetting A bit of fizz ahead will tell us Who has a head full of rebellious thoughts Hold, hold, 
Just like a rotten egg floats to the top of a bucket of water. Oh, it's time to We've exercised these demons. They shall be too pooped for scheming. Some double time discipline should stop the rot from setting in. All right, let's step it up. Double time. Discipline, discipline for children who aren't listening. The Messiah to teach you it's an easy way. There is no mystery to master the art of class and mistressing. It's discipline, discipline, discipline. The smell of rebellion, the stench of revolt. The league of prepubescent plotting A whiff of resistance The pong of dissent The funk of moral fiber rotting Let's bring this over It is 
and I am warm, like I've sailed. Into the eye of the storm, go on. Tip over, go on, tip over. And I tell you that there is nothing I shall not do, no length to which I shall not go, no punishment I shall not. What is it? It's, it's, it's a new. It's heading north! I've got a newt in my knickers! I've got a newt in my knickers! Get it off of me! Get it off of me! I've got a newt in my knickers! Well, that was interesting. I think we all ought to go home while we still can. <coughs> Watch. I moved with my eyes. Am I strange? Would you fancy a nice cup of tea? What do you think it is, this, this thing with my eyes? I cannot say, Matilda. But I do not think we should be frightened of it. I'm sure it has something to do with that incredible mind of yours. You mean, there's no room in my head for all my brains, so they have to squeeze out through my eyes? Well, no, not exactly, but yes, something like that. You certainly are a special girl, Matilda. I met your mother. She's unusual. What about your father? Is he proud to have a daughter as clever as you? Oh, yeah. He's always saying, Matilda, I am so proud to girl have, have a girl as clever as... That's not true, Miss Honey. He's not proud at all. He calls me a liar and a cheat and a nasty little creep. I see. Here we are. Home sweet home. Are you poor? Yes. Yes, I am. Very. Well, they don't actually, but I am even poorer than most because of other reasons. I used to live with my aunt, but one day I came across this old shed and fell completely in love with it. I ran to the farmer who owned it and begged him to let me stay here. He thought I was mad, but he agreed, and I've lived here ever since. So, Miss Honey, you can't live in a shed. I'm not strong like you, Matilda. My father died when I was very young. His name was Magnus, and he was very kind. But when he was gone, my aunt became my legal guardian. She was mean and cruel, like you'd hardly imagine. And then, when I got my job as a teacher, she presented me with a bill for looking after me all those years. She made me sign a contract to pay her back every penny. She even produced a document saying that my father has given her his entire house. But did he really do that, just give her his house? I find it hard to believe. Just like I cannot believe he would have killed himself, which is what she said happened. You think she did him in, don't you, Miss Honey? I cannot say, Matilda. All I know is after years of being bullied by that woman, maybe, well, pathetic, I was trapped. Who is your aunt? Uh, I... Who I is she? I really can't say. Who is she? It's Miss... Miss, Miss Trunchbull? Yes.
class is going to have a very special spelling test. And any child who gets one single answer wrong shall go to Chokey. What are you looking at? You. You. Spell Newt. Newt. N E W T. Newt. What? Miss Honey's very good at teaching. Nonsense. You. Stand up, turn around, and spell the one thing that you all are. Revolting. You're cheating! She's not! They're not! I've taught them! That's all. With love and kindness and patience and respect. How dare you bring those words into my classroom, madam? You know nothing of teaching, and I shall prove it. You spell Angel Command your scepter equivalent to Moses. That's not even a real word. Spell it or go to Chokey, and I shall warn you it has silent letters. It was a silent Z. You're going to choke What? Dot D Y P and table X A B F Y S B. What are you doing? What's going on? Stop this!
A few days later, I received a letter in the mail. It said my parents' will had been found, and I was now the owner of the beautiful old mansion, and not my evil aunt, one Agatha Trenchable, who was never seen again. The trophies were immediately destroyed, and the new headmistress took over. And her name was Miss Honey, and it was said that it was the best school in all the land. Matilda never again was able to move things with her eyes. She said it was because she no longer had a need for her powers, but she was still stuck with parents who were cruel and called her names. Don't you stand there, Goblin. We're going to Spain forever and we're never coming back. Spain? But, but why? Because this twit brain is a 155 old banger to the business mafia. Get here, hi! your pardon? I promise I'll look after her with love and respect. And they'll pay for everything. You mean leave our daughter here with you? Dad, you, you called me your daughter. Do you want to stay here as Miss Honey? Yes, yes, I do. And you want to look after her? I do. Well, we are a bit short of room. So, yes. And so they leapt into Miss Honey's arms and hugged her. And Miss Honey hugged her back. And they hardly even noticed as the one was. And Rudolfo. As the one was. And Rudolfo sped away into the distance because they had found each other. Yes, they had found each other. <laughs> 